What's going on everybody? Tom here with Keto Lifestyle and welcome to another cooking video just for you subscribers out there. Now today is also going to be another installment of our ketogenic barbecue series. And today we're going to be taking this ketogenic dry rub that we made for our pork and chicken and using it to make a keto pulled pork. And you can use this for pulled pork sandwiches, throw it in omelets, pretty much whatever you want to do. It's a very versatile thing to make. And that being said as well, since I'm doing this out of my smoker, I've also included a way for you to do, the, to do this in your oven if you don't have a smoker. But smokers are definitely the way to go if you have one at your disposal. Now with that in mind guys, let's go ahead and jump right into today's recipe. All right, everybody, welcome to the recipe. Now in front of me right here, we have a pork shoulder. This one is about 10 pounds and it is bone in. I really do recommend going bone in. You can find these at most grocery stores or any butcher that you really go to should have them on hand. They're not too expensive if you get them on sale. Additionally, we have some yellow mustard and some of that dry rub that we made in the video that I'm gonna link in the card. I think it's right here. Wherever, I'm doing this upside down. Look at the card for this dry rub if you guys have not made any yet. Now you may be wondering why these are wrapped in saran wrap. Well, normally I would be using like latex gloves or you know cooking gloves um, for this, but I ran out. So in order to stop me from spreading pork blood all over these things that I'm gonna put back in my fridge, I went ahead and wrapped them in saran wrap. So first thing I like to do when it comes to pulled pork is to get some mustard on it. Um, so this is just a yellow mustard. I track my mustard by weight, which I'll explain when we get to the dry rub, but I end up using about a quarter cup of it for this. Now, in order to accurately track the amount of dry rub we use, because, you know, there are carbs and spices, what I like to do is I like to weigh this whole container ahead of time, which is outside the camera because this is all soft. But this container weighs exactly 16 ounces. Um, and then when I'm done with it, I'll weigh it again and I'll figure out how many ounces of the dry rub I use and then use the recipe for that to track it. So go ahead and just coat this really nicely in the dry rub. We're not going with a light coating here, guys. We like to cake this stuff on. Now the mustard is gonna help it stick, but if you wanna go ahead and pat it on there to make sure it gets stuck, that's good too. All right, now that that is well coated, we're gonna go ahead and give this another way. And it is 14.65 ounces. So I used roughly one, one and a third ounce roughly of this dry rub. So we're gonna go ahead and add that to the recipe as is. Now the reason I tell you guys to just, you know, do this by the weight and uh, use the dry rub recipe is because depending on the size of your pork shoulder and how heavy your hand is, you can use a varying different amount of dry rub. And if you've got a really big one, you're gonna need more to cover it. So that's really just the best way to do it. So in order to get this dry rub to sink in and really become the most flavorful pulled pork we possibly can, I like to take this cling wrap and wrap the entire thing in cling wrap and let it sit in your fridge for between four and 24 hours before you actually wanna cook this. So ideally I'd give it 24 hours, but if you're doing it the day of, four hours will do. So just make sure you get this thing coated in cling wrap, stick it in your fridge until you're ready to cook. Now that we are ready to cook our pulled pork, it's time to preheat our oven or smoker to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Remove the cling wrap and place it fat side up on either the grill or an oven rack on top of a baking sheet. We're gonna cook this until the internal temperature reaches 160 degrees Fahrenheit, so about four hours. Then we're gonna remove it from the oven or smoker and wrap it in a double layer of aluminum foil. This serves two purposes. It stops the outside edge of meat from becoming too hard and dry, and it also keeps all of the moisture inside to make your meat nice and juicy. Once you've wrapped that in the double layer of aluminum foil, go ahead and put it back in your oven or smoker until the internal temperature reaches 204 degrees Fahrenheit, so about two hours, at which point you should be able to pull the bone right out and then pull it using two forks. Once my pork is pulled, I like to add about two tablespoons more of the dry rub and mix that in. This is to give a little bit more of that seasoning flavor since all we had was the stuff on the very outside edge. And here is our finished product. Well, now that you guys have seen the recipe, it is time for the taste test. So I'm gonna do this two ways for this taste test. First of all, I have a little piece of meat right here that does not have any sauce on it. It's just some straight pulled pork that you know has a little bit of the dry rub on it from the recipe. So we're gonna try this one first. So that one's very tender. You get a little bit of the spice. Bear in mind that there is a little bit of the dry rub and a ton of meat. So it's not gonna be a very potent flavor from the dry rub, but you are gonna get a little bit of the cumin, a little bit of the pepperiness coming through. Additionally, you're gonna pick up a lot of the smoke if you cooked it on a smoker. Now we're gonna try a bite in the way that I like it, which as you can see here, I've got some of the pulled pork with some of my red barbecue sauce that I made earlier in this series, and then some of the white barbecue sauce that we made earlier as well. And I really like the mix of them on pulled pork for whatever reason. 
But let's give it a bite like this. Now that is where it's at, guys. You get the, kind of the smokiness and the pepperiness of the meat and the dry rub coming through, mixing with both of those fantastic sauces. It's probably the best thing in the world. If you guys make some ketogenic hamburger buns that I have in this recipe right here, it goes great with them. Otherwise, I like eating it off a plate, out of a bowl, whatever. Plus, if you make this recipe, you've pretty much got your lunch and dinner meal prepped for a week. So, that's a hidden bonus. With that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and close the video. If you liked the video, leave it a like. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section. And if you have not subscribed yet, do me a huge favor, guys. Hit that subscribe button, show some love, and I will see you in the next one.